Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for coming to Drupal South 2024. We are here to share how the Australian government and the Source of Digital are partnering to make new GovCMS platform testing easier and better. We will show you the possible ways we have made sure government websites stay strong, safe, and user-friendly. In this session, we will talk about the handy testing tools that are free for all government agencies to use, helping them provide excellent digital services. So, thanks. So before we jump into our presentation, we would like to introduce ourselves. Uh, that photo is me, not fake one, but I took it 15 or 20 years ago. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm Joseph. Uh, part of a dedicated team at the Department of Finance. Uh, we work mostly behind the scenes, ensuring Gov CMS distribution are not only stable, but also secure. Being a provisional member of the Drupal security team, I also contribute to enhancing the overall security of the Drupal project. I'm Steve. You might remember me from such talks as yesterday. I was doing it. I did a talk in the, the big room. Um, I'm working for Salsa Digital as a senior DevOps engineer, kind of providing some platform services and helping uh, Joseph and the team at Finance kind of secure and provide a bunch of services, not just to the distribution, but to all the whole SaaS and Pi's, um, platform as well. So in our session, we will have four main points to cover. First, we will, we will look into existing tools for testing GovCMS websites. And then second, we will share how to make GovCMS sites quicker and more robust. Then we will focus on how to keep the GovCMS sites safe. Finally, we will look at a real example of the GovCMS distribution testing project. GovCMS gives you a bunch of free tools that help you check your website to make sure it works well, stays safe, and runs smoothly. These tools can help you test and check your website to ensure the code is high quality and works as expected before releasing it to production. Let us quickly go over what each tool does. Cypress, the first one, allows you to simulate user interactions on your Drupal website. For example, like clicking buttons, filling out forms, and navigating between pages. It is helpful for testing the functionality of your website from a user's perspective, ensuring that everything works as expected and providing confidence that your site is user-friendly. PHP unit is used for testing individual pieces of code within your Drupal code base, such as functions, classes, or modules. It helps ensure that your PHP code behaves correctly and produces the expected results. PHP unit tests are particularly useful for catching bugs and verifying the functionality of your Drupal sites and the lying logic. Now the BHAT, BHAT allows you to write tests in plain language that describe how your Drupal website should behave from a user's perspective. This test focuses on the behavior of your site's features and functionality. Rather than the underlying code, BHAT tests helps you ensure that your Drupal site meets its intended requirements and behaves as expected for end users. Drupal Rector. Drupal Rector automatically checks and updates your Drupal code base to adhere to modern best practices and coding standards. It helps to ensure that your Drupal site, the code is well maintained, follows Drupal conventions, 
and takes advantages of the latest improvements and optimizations available in Drupal. And then Drupal check. It scans your Drupal code base for potential issues and security vulnerabilities, helping you identify and fix problems before they cause issues in production. It ensures that your Drupal site is secure, stable, and meets Drupal's coding standards and best practices. Now that we have talked about five available tools, the best person to take us through ShipShip is Steve. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so you might be familiar with ShipShape. It's a tool that kind of validates the configuration layer of Drupal. So it validates the database and any configuration that you export against different operating policies that GovCMS kind of defined for your website. So it says, you know, for example, to meet certain security requirements, you mustn't have dblog enabled in production. You mustn't have this available. You must have a password policy that's set to 14 characters. You must have this. You must not have that. And so ShipShape is the tool that we built with the GovCMS team to be able to um, define the policies that um, are required by the websites and then also iterate and manage and run them against all of the Drupal sites in different areas. So it runs in CI, runs in pre-deploy, runs in post-deploy, and then can also run against the running websites as well to make sure that everything is kind of running and operating as we expect it to. Um, we've got another kind of slide to go through. So yeah, we, we're kind of working through that and making sure that that policy um, conti is continuously updated. And we're going to add it into different parts of the distribution as well to make sure that even the distribution layer <laughs> adheres to the policies that are defined. Um, and, and one of the, the benefits of doing it this way is that it allows you guys to have the freedom to build out Drupal sites to meet your client requirements, but also have that oversight from GovCMS to make sure that it matches the operating standards that it needs to have to run in production. Um, we've got a bunch of different things here that we're doing to make sure that um, the GovCMS platform runs in, in an in experienced way. So we're looking at uh, making sure sites are faster by doing a bunch of load testing. And so what we do there is we have um, different websites that are deployed into different clusters within the, webs uh, within the GovCMS platform that are using different configurations from the distribution. And we perform load testing on them pretty frequently to make sure that at least from out of the box, the distribution is as fast as possible. And we kind of fold that back into requirements within the project itself to can continuously improve and iterate through that, making sure that um, the, the distribution is, uh, is uh, performing optimally and it gives you guys enough kind of freedom to do what you need to do with your sites. Um, as mentioned before, to make things better, we're looking at using uh, implementing cross-device and browser testing. And so that's where Cypress and stuff comes in. It runs at the moment in the distribution layer. Um, and so it runs uh, with Joseph's team in their CI and CD pipelines to validate the device, cross-device compatibility for the base distribution as well. So it runs in CI uh, and C in the CI pipeline that ha they have running for GitHub, um, and it validates against you know Chrome, Firefox, and different things like that. We are looking at um, potentially bringing that into the SaaS platform as well, so we'll be able to expose Cypress and allow um, the. <laughs> That Joseph and I have been talking about this for a long time, so we've kind of got it in the backlog to make sure that we can uh, extend that and bring that functionality down to the, the SaaS um, platform as well to give that functionality into the um, GovCMS sites. And the last thing that we've got up here uh, is mentioned before, the thing that we're using to make sites stronger and more robust from a security and you know, um, policy adherence perspective is ShipShape. So uh, it runs in a very varying different places. You probably use it if you're familiar with the GovCMS platform. It runs in GitLab. And it'll kind of give you a report at the end of your GitLab pipeline and say, you know, you're, you're valid uh, against all of the different policies that GovCMS has provided, um, or you breached one and you kind of need to fix that before you can actually deploy your site. And so it runs there and it makes sure that, you know, we're all adhering to the right security standards that we need with it, um, to run sites within GovCMS. Um, we've got another slide here. So, yeah, just continuing with the ship shape trend, this is kind of like a, just a general. Uh, diagram of how it runs, where it runs, and what it does. So ShipShape is um, running against distribution, it runs in CI, and against environments for projects. And uh, this is just a, the tool that we've really uh, kind of worked on for the last couple of years to go through. It's come through a bunch of different iterations. Uh, you might remember from initial GovCMS days where it was Drutiny, then it moved into some bash scripting that we kind of did. 
and now we've kind of got this uh, open source tool that we've been able to kind of build out and expose and, and make available to everybody to run. So you can run this for your own projects as well, define your own policies and kind of piggyback off what we're doing with GovCMS to get this working through for your um, other projects as well. Um, next slide. <laughs> Um, so we'll go through some case studies, I think. So did you want to go through this, or do you want me to go through I this one? Go. You go, maybe kick <laughs> All right, cool. So um, one of the things that we're looking at, this is a case study of how we uh, do distribution testing and kind of the methodologies that we use internally to, to validate all of the stuff that we're doing for GovCMS from the distribution layer to make sure that it kind of uh, you know, meets our quality before it goes out and is uh, deployed to your SaaS site. So the objective that we have, we have two main goals for the testing framework and for testing the distribution itself. Um, so one of the main goals is that making sure that every GovCMS release we do is better uh, without introducing regressions and new problems to the site. So that's where things like Cypress testing, BHAT testing, PHP unit testing, all of those kinds of things come into play at the distribution layer. They run through a series of tests there, make sure that no, no regressions are introduced at the distribution layer. Secondly, we've uh, very recently uh, moved the testing framework out of the distribution itself into a separate repository. And so this has given us a bunch of benefits in that we can make changes to the testing framework without changing the distribution itself. So we can continue to iterate on the test process and do that in parallel to distribution changes. So we don't need to release a distribution change to have additional test coverage and additional test frameworks applied to the, um, to the distribution itself. Um, I uh, well, kind of covered the approach, but <laughs> um, and then the technique is so we use a bunch of different automation tools too for the distribution testing. We use tools like um, all of the tools that Joseph mentioned before when we went going through Cypress, PHP Unit, BHAT, all those kinds of things. But then we also look at different layers of CI CD as well. We've got like tugboat testing there to spin up environments. We've got CI CD pipelines that also spin up environments as well. And do, so there's testing happening at every layer of the stack that goes through the process to make sure that we've got enough coverage and enough confidence that we're rolling out these sites. Because where we make a change to the distribution, it's not just one change that we're making. We're rolling that out to you know, 300 plus websites. So we need to make sure that it's working right and it's working well and it's working fast. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. You want to go back over to Joseph? He can go through the next few slides. This is the most exciting part. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, thanks, Dave. So let's dive into how this works, starting with our CI pipeline design. Uh, there are three key requirements in our process. First, uh, we build the GovCMS distribution using the latest code changes. Next, our testing combines automated and manual methods, which is a big part of our process. Finally, we deploy the GovCMS distribution to various platforms, which might be Docker images or ready for use test site. So let's dive deeper into our distribution testing process. Especially, uh, we can think when we have a new update, like a pull request on GitHub to update a module. Our testing is divided into two main areas. Back-end testing. Here, we use a combination of automated tests and manual code reviews. Automated tests include using PHP unit to check issues with new Drupal core updates or PHP updates, like variants. The manual code review by our developers as an extra layer of assurance, helping us to be confident about the changes. We also use Drupal Rector to spot any compatibility issues, like Drupal Core, PHP variants. Front-end testing. This involves a mix of manual and automated end-to-end -end testing using Cypress. This test helps us ensure the user interface works smoothly, particularly important for critical security update. Additionally, we use Tugboat for testing individual pull requests and Lagoon for the final release checks. So this two-pronged approach ensures both the front 
and backends of Gov CMS are carefully tested and secure, meeting our design requirements from the initial stages. Now we are at the exciting part, where we choose the best tools and services for our testing. For automated testing, we use three main CI services. Circle CI, it jumps into action for quick checks whenever a pull request is made or updated. It's, liking, it's like having a fast, reliable mechanic inspecting our car at every tweak. Uh, GitHub CI, aka Dependent Bot, imagine this as Alex, of a recently joined team member who automatically updates our system where there's a new module update or a new version of a library. Alex never takes a break. And the ensuring of Gauss CMS is always up to date with minimum efforts from us. GitLab CI, this is our final quality check before a distribution release. It not only tests everything carefully, but also takes care of deploying our Docker images to Docker Hub when we are ready to tag a release. And then, manual testing. Besides the Euro local checks, we use Tugboat for detailed testing on each pull request and the Lagoon environments for that final critical review before we go live. This combination ensures our Gauss CMS is always in top shape, secure, and, re and ready for action. I would like to show you a short video that shows our process in action. We will begin from a pull request, go through the testing steps quickly, and end with pushing Docker images once all tests are successful. This will give you a good look at how our CI pipeline works. It's already start. Oh yes. I do have some music. <laughs> so this is the from the Alex created pull request on GitHub. Then Circle CI started to work. So inside Circle CI, we do have different checks from PHP unit to uh, Cypress. We, te uh, we checked everything that we want to know. For example, out of date modules, or PHP like Drupal coding standards, or some errors from Cypress. Inside this example, Alex tries to update our Gauss CMS from Drupal core or PHP version. Let me check. Yeah. And we have a field Cypress test. So Cypress does give you ability so that you can retrieve what happened, for example, inside the video. Now we know some steps could be happened when we want to uh, add a new view. The developer and tester is able to uh, trying to do some troubleshooting or trying to reproduce what happened with those steps. It is really helpful for us in such tasks. So this is Tugboat. With every pull request, Tugboat can give us a testing environment for both testers and the developers. So the benefits of doing this is that they are standalone environment. We can see it from the front end, and we can check from the Tugboat logs. And if the tester is saying something uh, you need to check, it can make sure the tester and developers can work at the same platform. So here we can see the tugboat can give you the, the logs. So we can see what went wrong there. Uh, yeah. Yeah.
Yeah, here's the username and password. It can also give you ability to like yeah, log in from terminal. It's really good for troubleshooting. So after this, uh, the GitHub side, uh, we will move to GitLab. This is regarding to the deployment side. Uh, for security reasons, I can only give you some like roughly pictures here. <laughs> so there's a lot of tests here. Once they are all green, we will deploy to Docker Hub. Yes, Stephen is the like. Hmm? Cool. Uh, it's the Gulf CMS distribution, like a Lagoon images. Yeah, so it's Drupal installed into the a Docker image yeah. with PHP running, and that uh, and it gives the all of the dependencies that are Gulf CMS in that image that's being deployed. And it deploys the other images too. So it deploys the whole suite. So it deploys Nginx, PHP, CI image, which has GovCMS baked into it. Um, database. database uh, yeah. And, and um, <laughs> also Varnish. There's a Varnish image to get pushed for some reason. <laughs> we don't use Varnish, but it gets pushed because it was uh, there for a little while. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> After watching the video, uh, it's very important to mention that we are always working to make our process uh, even better. We have many plans this year, like enhancing our Cypress testing, and as Stephen said, uh, like extending Cypress support to SaaS sites. Also, we are exploring ways to involve more sites in our release testing. With over 300 Gov CMS sites, only one test site from us just is not enough. So one key message uh, we want to highlight is the importance of working together. I remember joking with our tester uh, saying, the minute I hand the build over, it stops working. Uh, sorry, it's a bad joke. It's a light-hearted way to say we need to improve our collaboration. So to do this, uh, we focus on four things. I try to make it as a word, uh, like, but uh, it's different from my talking. It's clear communication, uh, starting early, use tools that everyone can access, and trusting each other. Whether we are developers or testers, we are all aiming for the same thing, right? To deliver the changes safely and effectively. Yeah, I love the heart, by the way. Uh, uh, we also want to use this chance to thank all of our colleagues and give a special thank you to the testers uh, who helped us maintain the GovCMS platform for the public. So here we have listed some uh, useful resources for you. Please feel free to explore all these links to dive deeper into the subjects we discussed. The first one is ShipShip. The second one is Gov CMS tests. So uh, inside the Gov CMS tests, it's hopefully that we showed a good example that how we decoupled tests from the distribution code base. Uh, yeah. So that's all from us. Please feel welcome to share your thoughts or your experience with us. And if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask. Thanks. <laughs> Very good. Good job. Question outside. Um, so for organizations that are using the scaffold for, for PaaS, um, are there changes we're expecting to see that we could potentially apply through to what we're doing on PaaS? Potentially, yeah. So that'll be it'll come via the scaffold. So it'll be up to the PaaS agency to merge that back in and do that once the tooling is available. But it will yeah, it'll be available for PaaS. So or we haven't, it's still early at this point, we haven't um, even really scoped out what the change will be yet, so we're still kind of just, yeah, very, very early in the phase. Toby? Um, so with SaaS clients, you said eventually you're rolling out Cypress, is that right? Looking to. Looking yep. to. So, and Cypress, just, just wanted to get my head around, that's for visual testing? So, uh, so here we have a roughly plan. So what we are having now is that we are at the same page now. We want to do this, but uh, from the we will have it have to uh, split it into different stages. 
at first, for example, we may introduce a suppressed image so that people can start to test from their local environment. Then second stage, we could provide a suppressed image that so people can test it through their CI pipeline. Then third stage, uh, this morning I had to talk with Toby. He's not here. OK, I couldn't announce it. But there's something happened from upstream. He, was, he talked about that could give us something that you can view your test results from your dashboard. But that is on the roadmap. Uh, so this is some like stages we are going to uh, start. But we will start with you can start your test from your local environment. This will be stage one. Thanks. All right, one more question only. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I was, I was following up on visual regression testing. So, um, so are you using Tugboat to do visual regression testing? Uh, so, uh, I think Tugboat can be used for different purposes, but in our side, is that we are using it for uh, like the shared, like the live instance for both the tester and the developers when we're doing some like troubleshooting. For example, when a tester spots an issue, However, it's really hard for developers to replicate the steps. Then we use Tugboat so that, OK, the test can give us the developers which page, what happened there. So the because sometimes the tester cannot give us too many details. By, doing, by using the Tugboat, our developer, we are able to log into the site, check the logs, and then like, troubleshoot to find out what happened there. So this is our usage for the Tugboat. But from what I know is that, yes, Tugboat, they have certain features there. You can use it for those, like the, dif the differences between the each like, changes there. All right. Yeah. If you have more questions, please ask. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.